Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but welcome to the live broadcast. If you're here on replay, welcome to. We're so glad to have you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this beautiful reflection painting. It's super simple, super easy. It's going to be one of the quicker, easy ones we've done. It's really great um, just on every level of art because it's so much fun to do. I really enjoy doing it a lot. In the description, where I like to hide, you know, materials and information and all kinds of craziness. There is currently a link for the uh, painting. And then as soon as the live is over, hopefully check will be done with the traceable. Because it occurred to me you guys might want a traceable. Another thing you might enjoy is going online and just searching a silhouette rowboat. Because you're going to find a lot of different wonderful pictures. So... That can be really helpful to you on your art journey, too. I just want to welcome all of the amazing live community that's here today. The Sherpets, the Hardest, everybody who's come in. I have more and more recently been realizing that you guys are the most amazing community ever. Like, I, I see you other places, and I'm always like, wow, this is a loving, amazing, creative group of people. And I just want to say I appreciate that. And John would like to say he appreciates Hi. that. He's I my co-captain that I forgot to announce <laughs> is waving wildly like, I'm here too. You no, know, I don't want to be that creepy looming no. voice that just pops in. So. I like the creepy looming voice. It's my favorite. And we're really happy to have John. I so appreciate his time, the time he takes to be with us. He's going to be, he reads the comments. Um, mm -hmm. We've taken my comments away, as you guys well know. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'll just stop painting and talking and just stop read your comments because I think you guys are super interesting today we're going to be doing a 16 by 20 canvas and we're working with acrylic paint um, we're going to be putting the colors out as we need it because we're going to first paint the canvas a solid color which we love to do but before we ever paint a canvas we have something we like to do which oh, is yeah. wishes oh yeah and we love our wishes so before we start our wishes I want us to breathe in the good Breathe out the bad, because this whole painting, we're going to be reflecting on the good and releasing the bad. Yeah. And wishing. And wishing. Wishing and is wishing. good. Wishing is super, super good. I think I'm going to pull a blue pen for wishes, because it'll... I have watercolor pencils that I like to write my wishes in. Mm -hmm. Wishing on a canvas is a really interesting thing. You can do it where you paint over it, or you can write them permanently, like messages and wishes on the back of these stretchers. This is something a lot of artists do. I do it personally in my practice. It makes me feel better. This is why we do it. And we love being able to do wishes for our community. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I'm just scrolling back up here right now, going through for some of those. Yeah. And. Uh, well, I, I have one while you're finding that. I know. I, I, go, ahead, go right ahead. Right. I've so I just recently was introduced, and many of you were introduced to Jody. Jody just painted our birch trees, and it was a gorgeous painting of the birch trees. And perfect, beautiful, wonderful painting the birch trees. And then she shared with us that she's paralyzed, and she painted it with her mouth. Mm -hmm. Really amazing. John may find that painting and, and pop that up here because I, I, I shared with him a screenshot. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I do have that. And, so he, and so he may or may not be able to. We'll see what the technology lets us do. I just have to do that a little bit later. But yeah, we so I followed up with Jody because I was like, I just have to tell you artist to artist that this isn't a good painting for somebody who painted it with their mouth. This is just a good painting. However, you got that paint on canvas. Yeah. I just personally am impressed and I certainly hope you continue painting. And she shared back with me that, um, she was paralyzed from abuse, from mm -hmm. spousal abuse. So, and she was saying, you know, go ahead and share my story. If it helps other people, she's doing this right now to do therapy in her neck, to strengthen her neck. And it got me kind of pondering this. And I just want to say to whoever's watching today that you have worth, that you have value, and you deserve safety and well-being in your life. Absolutely. You know, so while you're painting this, I really want you to ponder on the kind of things that you deserve to have in your life, the happy, safety, healthy, well-being that you have. And so I, my personal wish 
is that Jody keeps painting. That's a personal wish that I have, that Jody keeps painting because I think she has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And my other personal wish is that we see an end to domestic violence. Yes. Because I just think that that should be a curable, stoppable thing. So that's my wish. I know you, it's hard to see it in the blue watercolor pencil, but that I would love to see an end to domestic violence. And I would love to see those rates drop in 2016 and us move into an era, golden age, where we just uh, don't hit each other. Yep. That would be just really nice if we could just all that. stop hitting each other. <laughs> <laughs> just the little things. You just, know. <laughs> that would be just a good start as a species. Did you have some of our other wishes? Oh, oh yeah. So we got a bunch of them. So uh, Chelsea's grandpa is, is, isn't is feeling very well, so we want to send him some good wishes. Uh, Nikki B's mom is, goes in for a very long surgery today. I know uh, also Sky's grandmother has a surgery coming up. Mm -hmm. I, so I, Nikki B and Sky. Yeah, I, I think it's And uh, uh, let's see here. I saw that Sandy was worried about going to the dentist, so we'll send her some good wishes because everybody's afraid of going to the dentist. So Let me get my easy surgery and quick recovery. Yeah. Because I want, I want everyone going into surgery right now to have an easy surgery and a quick recovery. Mm -hmm. That's important. Oh, and I, I, who was it had the dentist fear? Uh, Sandy. Sandy, I feel you. You wish back for me when I got to go. I, I wish you strength and courage, and I wish you a pain-free. I love the visits when I go in there all freaked out, and then I feel silly. So I wish that for you, where I'm like, oh, it was just fun. I'm just being silly. So I wish Sandy just the best possible dental visit ever. I know, oh, the other wish for Sky mm -hmm. is that um, she gets into her graduate. School. Oh yes, yes. We got I got uh, we got a two three here that I'm gonna all we'll we'll run through. Okay, we got we got a we, minute because this is gonna be oh, such good. a fast painting. Good, we have a lot of wishes. I just don't want to. I'm you know it's, I'm always so nervous about trying to get as many as I can in. I I know we just we have this is gonna be a quick quick painting. Okay, good. So uh, let's see here. Uh, we need to send a wish to Ali uh, Alyssa for continued health improvement. Uh, we need to send her a wish for continued health improvement on her journey. So. Oh, I love that. And a wish for Donna's son to get better. Oh, yes. I definitely wish for Donna's son to get better. And then a really important one that I, I wanted to get here. Okay. Send a wish to Lindsay's sister. Her husband just left for basic training in the Army, and he's a thousand miles away from her serving our country while she's all alone at home. So well, I have a wish for both of them. Hug to both of them. <laughs> yeah, and know I, that we all appreciate what they're doing. I wish courage and strength for them, and I wish safety and well-being for them. Yeah, and and we really appreciate what you're doing. You know, that's a big sacrifice you're making for our country, and I but appreciate it. They're both making yeah, a sacrifice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Too. Both yeah. of them. You know, yeah. she's at home alone, and he's out there serving her country. I hope he comes home safe. Yeah. I hope she paints with us. That'll be a good way to fill the time. <laughs> I, I, I invite her to paint with us, too. And <laughs> all of our yes. serving soldiers. Just love those guys. Girls. Yes, paint with us. So, yeah, I think there's that's... Uh, okay. And, oh, there's, a, there's a, a, a resounding wish for colon health. Oh, I, I, I do that. At huh. all, all the whole digestive tract. We just all need that, don't we? Yep. Our food. And then, of course, to all of those, I know our own Audie Gustafson has mm -hmm. gone through some flooding. So all those who've gone through some weather, I wish you guys well. We had deaths here in Houston. And uh, we, here at Emble, I know many of you sent us, like, concern. I, know, I don't know what the news makes it sound like, but um, here it was just drizzling. Mm -hmm. So we were totally okay. But some people were not okay, and we wish them well-being. And we want to say thank you to all of our moderators and everybody else in the chat who can take all the rest of those wishes and put them on canvases for yeah. us, the ones that we can't quite get to, and, yeah. and but we appreciate it. You can do that. You can take somebody else's wish and put it on your canvas. Wishes can be big and substantial. They can be small and silly. Wishes, and, all wishes are valid. Yeah, it's it's the energy that matters. And there's a, over 100 people out here with us in this wishing segment, so uh, it's there's <laughs> thank just you a for lot wishing of with here. us. Yeah, it's it, and I appreciate all of the wishes. So, so I'm going to get painting. Please get painting. I have gratitude for the wishes, but I'm also going to get painting. 
Mm -hmm. I have this Pro Stroke um, a Creative Mark power little power curl brush that I love. The giant power the curl. The giant brush. one. It's a number 16. Now Everybody I want you to this. think some of the other number 16s you've seen me have which are small. <laughs> so you'll start to get my point on this sizing thing. But I like this. It's a Teclon fiber. It's real soft. It's got the nickel free handle. It's a really nice brush. These are normally very pricey, but Jerry's Artorama runs crazy, crazy sales right now. I don't know how long it'll be because these YouTube videos are up, but I always check it mm -hmm. because they have crazy sales. And sometimes you can get a $50, $60 brush for $5. Yes. And I'm all for that. I have Aqua Paint out today. Uh, it, ooh. This is Aqua. Um, a little Southern Ocean blue and white would work. Um, any sort of turquoise paint, turquoise craft paint. This is a base color. This is an undercoat or an acrylic colored ground. Now we do our acrylic colored ground a little differently than a lot of artists do, John. Oh yeah? Yeah, a lot of artists really thin this down to almost a water consistency. Really, why? Um, because they want just a wash, just just a stain. But the problem is on a coated canvas, the paint can't bond to the canvas. And you get a thing called underbinding. Oh, where the paint lifts and flakes off? Mm-hmm. And it can cause your whole painting to fall off. Now, I've never oh. had it happen, but I've heard stories. I don't know if that's like the boogeyman of art. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever actually even shown me a canvas that was in progress of underbinding. But it's like this story everybody tells. And my point is, um, just thin it less. <laughs> yeah. And then you don't have that anxiety. If you really, really, if you're a professional artist, I don't know, you might be here, a professional artist hanging out with us. My two cents on that is just switch to an airbrush medium mm -hmm. or a fluid medium. And that'll take it down to a water consistency and cause no underbinding. Get the same effect, no loss of adherence. Yeah. You know. Um, if I were to do that on, you know, my own painting and my own practice, that's definitely what I would do is use a medium to thin it mm -hmm. or I'd use a ground to thin it into. Stuff we'll be covering in 2016 for the pairs. Yeah. Which I'm loving seeing, John. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of pair of pairs. There's a lot of pairs. And and what's great is that, is, is that you, you, you know, whether you call it a pair or a pairs. Or pairs. Or pairs, pairs. <laughs> Spell we it all, however you like. We all know what you're talking about. We <laughs> all know what you're saying, and that part <laughs> is awesome. So it's, it's just awesome to, to have people in chat go, uh, I, I painted my pairs. I mean pairs. I mean my pair of pairs. <laughs> my pair of pairs. <laughs> I hope we get a lot of memes and funny jokes running for that. Um, there was a question. Yes, some of our community members are um, at Kerry Quirk and... Ian and some other people are working on bingo, Sherpa bingo. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we're pr pr pretty excited about that. You can kind of see that I just covered this canvas with paint. I'm not being... You're not being picky? No, it's just not a big, big thing. I'm going to also make sure that my um, up-close cam... Let's check our up-close cam is nice and up-close. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can kind of see that that's just got brushy strokes. Yeah. One of the tough things about aqua is it falls into that range of blue. That the camera can't see? Well, it's actually, I found out what it is. It has more to do with the color of light that we're using. Oh, really? Because we have a couple colors of light and, you know, the cameras, uh, we have one really good quality camera, one not so good quality camera. We're working <laughs> on that. <laughs> I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer because the next oh, part no. I'm going to be using tape and measuring. Okay. Can you talk to everybody? I, I can. I love I'm, it when you talk to everyone. I'm just John sort of talks to. What is this like on the replay though? When you're, do they hear you talking? They hear me talking. All right, just I, bumbling along quietly. He's a I, sweetie pie. No, he doesn't fumble. I, I do. You just don't know because you don't watch the. You don't even watch your own video. Breathe in the good. Breathe out the bad. Dry your painting. Like she's trying to give me a pep talk before she abandons me. See, there's a reason why I'm on this side of the camera and she's on that side of the camera, right? So, yeah. And, and you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, I, I do know that the, uh, the color is one of those things we're working on. It has a, has a lot to do with it. We have, these, we have two different quality cameras, one with a really big iris that has a lot of dynamic range, and another one that has a relatively small iris and not a lot of dynamic range. So anytime we do any zooming, cut, we get color shift due to lack of light and things like that. It's all sorts of weird stuff. Oh, um, that was much faster. So they aren't nearly as bored about me talking about light and tech. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you know, that make funny colors. 
We, we do make funny colors. I really like this aqua. But again, you can mix this with phthalo blue, cad yellow and white. You could mix this with Southern Ocean Blue and White. You can just get aqua and paint on. What it is is about having a turquoise background. By the way, you could do this this painting in like any set of colors that you wanted to. Once <laughs> you know this technique, right, you've got it. Now, this part, I won't lie to you, is not good for the manicure. Oh, yeah. But very good for the soul. I like to get, I have a sea sponge. I'm, and I'm, this is a bumpily sea sponge. You, you can what? You, yeah, bumpily. It's oh, technical bump, term. I thought I thought you bumpily. said bumpily sea. I was like bumpily. Oh, bumpily. There's okay. probably hey internet. <laughs> what exact type of sponge is this? I think that's a natural sponge. I know there, but the, look, this is a natural sponge. I'm gonna tell you right now, natural sponge is not enough of an information source. Oh yeah. Say natural sponge, natural sponge. So this is probably a particular type of natural sponge that you guys will Google or know. And I love that you do that. But this is that you want to get it wet. Mm -hmm. So I like to get it wet. Wring it out. Damp. And sometimes I'll dry off the excess water in my towel. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to come and load up with some white paint. And some of the blue paint. And then some more white paint. And I'm going to come in the upper corner. Let's see if my mm -hmm. up-close cam will... Uh, so we call it, we have named this cam the nausea cam, seizure <laughs> cam. <laughs> you have to go up a little bit more. This way? Oh, right, that's good. Yeah, up. Okay. Well, How about high. that? Yeah, you can zoom out. That's fine. Okay. We just want to see. Now, why I like this sponge is it makes this decorative pattern. Martha Stewart is thrilled wherever she is with this decorative pattern. Is she? Yes. I bet oh that my, there is a, a Martha Stewart pattern. sponge that does this um, even better than my natural. She's probably trained sponge sponges to grow. I, no, she has interns that prune the sponges. <laughs> <laughs> About a million of them. <laughs> she does. <laughs> As I'm going out, I'm getting a little heavier into my aqua, and it gives me a nice blend. Oh, yeah. All right, this is just... Now, right now, you're imagining you could have done a yellow, red, and orange background as well. It's it's winter, so we picked a cooler, more mellow back, right? Yep. Because that's what you do in winter. And I'm doing this in a half round. I'm imagining a round kind of little circle here dinner plate I'm letting my sponge have texture I'm gonna put out a little bit of quinacridone you could do a magenta you could do any kind of real red actually I just we happen to have quinacridone and we likes it you so we use it <laughs> because you have now uh, there was a question earlier could you use phthalo blue if that's what you had yeah you could use th I mean phthalo blue instead of your uh, your aqua yeah, you could. Okay. And you would just have um, lighten a phthalo blue with a little white. Oh, okay, cool. Because you want it to be a slightly light shade. Did you know they were trying to get me to sing while you were away? Really? Yeah, they were like, you should sing. I was like, you don't want me to sing for wow. sure. <laughs> it's like they don't know you at all. <laughs> no, actually, John Campbell, he's quite musical. So now I'm sponging this in a little bit into the space, and I want to define my round shape here this is an abstract painting and the way I define these shapes and each one will look a little different you could do <laughs> seriously 50 or 60 of these in different color schemes with different subjects you could do oh, a yeah. lawn and then a dolphin it's just really endless this is one of those things where your creativity can just go amok and you can just see how I'm swirling it in there uh huh I, I'll, I'll even show you on the up close cam. I don't know if the up close cam can oh, see yeah, it. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's just you know, it's not all mushy and wet through the sponge. And this is the stuff in sponging techniques that you're just kind of watching for. Is you don't want it to be mushy. Yeah. That's all we're saying. So it's not a dry brush. It's but it's a bit of a dry sponge. <laughs> Seeing it just you just sponge it and push it down. And it's just a lot of fun. So, so this this could 
you could say that when you're in the brush aisle next time, you could you could look at your sponges a little differently when you're selecting them. Yeah. Because you got a you got a winner of a sponge there. Well, I, here's why I felt okay about teaching this and having this winter sponge. Is there were these packages at Michael's for four dollars, and they all had one of these weird little ones. On oh, there. cool. So I felt like, well, that was something you could get. And then I realized I've seen this exact sponge at Home Depot in the Martha Stewart decorative painting department. Oh, sure. But I, I think probably in the dollar store or something like that. Yeah. You, find... you just are looking for this bumping, bumpy one. I think if one of our community members like can figure out the name of this thing. <laughs> <coughs> so well, I'm just darkening it up as I go here. A little bit. Not mm -hmm. a lot. Still just kind of getting into the white and purple. Coming over here, um, let me move the camera over a little bit. And you can kind of see how this is going. Now, you have that, that you, you did dampen that and got it all nice and wet for I, us in the beginning. You dampen it first, wring it out. So it's not nice and wet, it's damp. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's not. It would still soak up water if you. Okay, so that's the amount of dampness. Is I get it damp, I wring it out, and then I wring it out a little more in my towel. Yeah. You just want it to have some residual moisture so it's not wicking all the paint into it yeah. nonstop. Now I'm, I've gotten a little more white and I'm sponging this in and I'm taking out as I'm working out here, a little more of the turquoise is, is disappearing. Because the turquoise is such a hot color, as I'm going, putting out a little more white, you go through some paint on this. Um, it really is a very kind of shocking, enjoyable, you know, little color scheme that you're working on here. And just enjoy dabbing, 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 dabbing. You can dab fast. You can dab slow. You can breathe it in and let it out. Breathe in the good. Good things in your life that are happening. Mm. And just breathe away the bad. This breathing is actually part of art. Oh yeah. When you go to art school, one of the things that you'll learn is how to breathe and work. So you don't hold your breath. Sometimes during cre creativity, you'll hold your breath. Oh yeah, that's true. So if you get into practices of like, I'm gonna breathe in the good and breathe out the bad, and you th let things go, because in a painting, fear and holding on to things that aren't working you know, fear you won't get the technique, fear it's not coming out, anxiety, that is what slows you down in your creative process. And being able to release that, that's how you get, grow oh, wow, I ran out of purple. That's how you're <laughs> growing in your creative process. And breathing is an honest, real part of that. you got to be able to breathe while you paint. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy. I can't tell you how much it's just easy to hold your breath. I don't know. I think in life we tend to hold our breath, don't we, John? Yeah. We're breath holders as a species. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I just went and grabbed just whatever was like little quinacridone was hanging out there. And I'm letting a slightly darker color happen here. Now, I don't mind my easel getting dirty, but if you were trying to prevent your easel getting dirty, you would flip this canvas over. <laughs> So that you were never painting the edge that was on the rest. So many people, John, got easels for the, for the holidays. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I saw a lot of that going on in the community. I saw a lot of people get some Bob Ross books, number 23. <laughs> book saw, number I is. saw that. That looks so, like, that looks like fun. Well, that's what we're doing, right? We've yeah. got that coming up. I've got a bunch of lessons sort of up ahead. You can see what's... If you scroll through the playlist now, you can kind of get a, a forward-facing idea of what nonsense we're up to. And then, of course, there's always surprise lessons like the Made by Mommy Craft Challenge, <laughs> <laughs> which was just one of those things I just can't tell you. Oh, wow. So it looks like uh, we, uh, we just had someone come in from uh, India and say hello. That was interesting. Hello. Anita. That is very cool. I, I always like to say hello to people from exotic new countries because <laughs> and what's so funny is like like but only exotic from us right well, like, but because we're our, exotic to them <laughs> well and, and you know we have some some swiss and some english and some german and danish and american and canadians but we don't have a lot of indian folks joining us yet and i think that's pretty cool 
I think that is very cool. Need to go to India. Yeah. Really need to. Just on my personal journey. I'm going to put out a little more quinacridone because I feel like this didn't get quite pink enough right here. You want more, more Passamaquoddy pink? Passamaquoddy. Oh, I love Pete's Dragon. If no one's getting what Passamaquoddy <laughs> is from, it's from no, Pete's they get Dragon. It. They totally oh, they okay. get it. <laughs> I love that our community knows what the, you know, we're talking about. Oh, yeah. I'm just working. See, this is what you can do. So here's the trick with sponging. I know I've asked you to do a couple sponging things. We sponged a galaxy, some nebula stuff, and now we're sponging this. And we'll even cover this in pairs. This is just a technique that you can have in your in your space and having that technique and I'm going to put out a little blue paint here. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get a little on my sponge even though I've got all like this purple on here. So this is what that looks like. Oh, There, there you are. Ah. Yeah. And I'm just going to make sure that it's sponged into here. And so as we layer and hopefully you guys can see this. Right? We're we're creating a beautiful effect. And it'll be a balancing act between layering and having a little bit of this here and not over muddying the process. All right, so there we go. We have this nice little weird, beautiful decorative painting in. And I'm going to put my sponge in water. And you can sort of see, not easy on the manicure. Oh, yeah. Right? But here's the deal. Um, if you have uh, shellac nails, you can take it all off with acetone. And if you don't have shellac nails, you can take it all off with alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Well, that's very good to know. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to draw my painting again, John. Oh, yeah? I do. I have to draw my painting again, and I like to draw it. <laughs> I, I'm in all a right. good mood today. I've been, th I've been like... I. I've been singing Everything is Awesome. John is really tired of it. <laughs> it's like been playing on uh, Alexa, like the Amazon Echo thing, like again and again and again and again and again. Because I'm like, I just feel like it's like the theme song for right now. Well, I'm going to say hello to Callie and all of the folks uh, that are joining us here in the audience while oh. you go and... I'm going to try. And you, you say hi to everybody. Dry. And then I'll tell me who's hello. here. Is it oh. Callie Black? Uh, Callie, hello, hashtag music, hashtag art, hashtag peace. So... Oh, wow. I don't know. She's from England and India. Oh, no. But so. hi, Callie. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to draw my painting. You draw your painting. I'll say hello. So, yeah. Uh, so, hello, everyone from all over the world. And we do appreciate you guys all tuning in. Um, it it really is interesting to, to know and learn where all of you guys are from and to have you send in the paintings that you do of, our, of, of this stuff. I mean, it, it really does make a difference to Cinnamon and I to see all the work that you guys do, and it means a lot when you share that. So, you know, uh, please do take the, the time to, uh, to, you know, to post up pictures up on, uh, uh, up on Facebook and on our uh, YouTube page there, and, and, and comment, like, and share as much as you can, because, you know, when you share this, it, it helps get the word out there, and that's really the thing that we're most interested in doing, is sharing the good work and good messages that Cinnamon's putting on Canada. So thank you guys for joining us. And, uh, you know, that's probably all I have to say. Hopefully you'll be back soon with me. Thank you for wondering what I'll see next. Oh, oh someone says I'm too good. 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 So, yeah. Sure. Uh, Facebook. We invite people from Facebook. On, uh, Heart Party. Cinnamon Company's Heart Party. Facebook. Of course, there's my page. Twitter. There's Instagram. And you know, you guys are not on the web page. I'm trying to decide how many inches down I want this. I'm thinking four and guys. Not being. Uh, 
Um, so before I have in tape my painter's tape, and we've talked about this. This is not like regular masking tape. This is not the painter's tape at Home Depot. This is artist tape. Mm. Um, this is the Michaels tape. You've got to burnish it. You have to think about it. Mom is saying that the other tape, the really good artist tape, has more features. Like it takes heat, and you can leave it on for days, and it peels. It does a better seal and all that. But look, for a buck or two, this mm. does everything I need this to do. And um, I can get it really easily. Well, we seem to have ha be in the middle of a really bad stream buffering problem. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're going to hold on just a second because it says that... Uh, are we recording or? Well, we are, but what we can do is remember we can go back and edit. So if you just hold on just a second here, okay. we can cut out this little block of bad feed and uh, see if we can resolve that. Okay. So give me just a moment here. All right. Okay. It looks like it's back. Okay. And so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just back up a little bit and we're to, gonna to what stage? The tape stage? Yeah, because we just we're gonna we're gonna start picking back up there. When I measured it out or tape? We well, you could just, just start back over from measuring it out because we'll go back and edit this. Oh, okay. So we'll edit out whatever was bad. So yeah. what I did was, because we're going to be going back, is I made a mark at four and a half and over here at four and a half with chalk. Okay. And you could do that with any ruler. This just happens to be my T-square. We were discussing earlier if we thought it was from college. Once I have that those marks up with chalk right there, I use my artist tape, and if, if you're seeing this again because your stream was good in spite of our stream, I get this from Michael's. It's a couple bucks. It is not like masking tape. It is not the painter's tape at Home Depot. This is specially made for painters. It won't pull up, and this would work for art journalers, anybody. It won't pull up the work from underneath, but it will create a seal. You may have to burnish it down with a finger. So I made a point of I'm pushing it down using my nails. Pushing it down. And this helps me create a... The trick of this painting is having a really wonderfully level horizon line. Yeah. So this is a great way for me to get that. I'm going to put out Mars Black. Though here's the thing, guys. It does not need to be Mars Black. <laughs> yeah. That's not the requirement. Now, how far down did you uh, measure there? Four and a half inches. Four and a half inches. Okay. Four and a half inches down to here and then the tape down so oh. wherever we've got to edit to fix the stream buffering that's what we did was four and a half inches down you know what and i'm loading up a small bright and i'm really liking these liquitex brushes this is a small bright oh, there it goes. with black paint you can see how i've loaded it brights are square and very sharp on their little edges and the first thing i'm going to do is come along my tape line and make as thin of a line as I can using my tape as a guide. Cool? My kids are joyful today. I'm gonna wait because I want them to be able to do this on the up close cam. <laughs> we have the family track going on in the background, so that's always terrific. I hope you guys are liking this painting. This painting is so easy and fun to do. And I like it because it's just graphically gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a really pretty graphic painting. So, you know, it's funny here. Uh, Kelly was saying that uh, she was paying, like, 15 bucks for a roll of painter's tape up in Canada. And, uh, but, and, and it was like, uh, let's see, let me scroll back up in here, because I think, was it Karen? Yeah, it was Karen was saying that it was, uh, it was nine bucks for one in Florida. But if you use the 40% off coupon, it brought it way down. The heck is going on with painter's tape in those places? Well, probably it's just that uh, painter's tape's more than what you think. You were just accustomed. You're just so accustomed no, to it. No, no, I would notice nine dollars. I'd be mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would be mad. <laughs> like the good painter's tape, absolutely nine bucks. But the Michaels painter's tape, mm -mm. Hmm. would not be okay. I'd be really ticked at Michaels. We'd be having words. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, a really good roll of blue painter's tape like you know for a big thick roll is only like six bucks yeah that's bucks. but that's the that's the um stuff at home depot and that won't yeah, work yeah you, you know, and you know, that's what i'm saying that was like, i can't imagine that yeah it, it's a it's smaller weird. roll would be more 
that much more. All right. Now we're going to do our little mountain range. But look, your little mountain range could have trees. Your little mountain range could have a house. Your little mountain range can have any little weird messaging that you like. I'm doing a simple one. I'm going to come up about an inch and a half and make a little mark. And then I'm just going to wander and meander. I think of the California hills in Northern California and how they go down to the beach when I'm trying to figure out how I'm doing this. And so that's what I'm basing that on. And then just paint that all in solid black. Hmm. That simple. And because I've got my painter's tape, I don't even have to be that mental about my edge. Nine dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just draw a straight line at nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I would get my straight line kill skills no. together. I mean, that roll of tape goes a long way, though. It does, and the, and there are some nine dollar artist tape that the one at Michael's should not cost you that much. It and goes a lot less far with children. Oh, my kids keep getting into it, and they just love that it's yellow. I don't know what's going on up in here. Yeah, but a roll of painter's tape should last you a long time. So and mine do. Yeah, when the kids don't find them. I've also seen them outside though in the shed though, babe. Well, that, that I'm just saying. <laughs> I can no idea. <laughs> I'm You're not like, going to comment oh, on oh, that oh, at oh, all. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but it's been used for good purposes. Are we blaming the kids? <laughs> no, no, I totally own that. I'm so now truck. you can either do a nice, perfect little quarter size circle here, or you can do a moon. I'm going to do a moon because I feel like this feels very nighttime. Yeah. So this wonderful man, this person, he's taking a row at night. So I just make my little letter C as good as I can on the edge of my brush. You could do a detail brush. Okay. You can, the moon gets away with you, decide it's the sun. <laughs> By the way, once it's dry, if it does anything that you don't like and you're like, I'm really unhappy with it. Because <laughs> for some reason, emotionally, y'all are very intolerant of your moons. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's not like my moon is particularly better than any of the moons I'm seeing anyone else do. I'm just like, good enough. And you guys are like, it's not the moon in my heart. Mm. You have a moon in your heart. And when it's not that, you're like, I'm all mad at my moon. <laughs> so if you're mad at your moon, you can sponge that sucker out. And remoon it. And remoon it. It's totally okay. Now. You could even have multi-moons. We're going to have Chuck do a traceable. But you could, again, go get one of these little silhouettes. And transfer this canvas. Uh, Lindsay, on almost every watercolor painting she has, gives a instruction on how to transfer an image. Oh, yeah. So that's really good. Out there she, in those She covers, videos. like, a lot of methods of transferring an image onto a canvas. So that would be a good resource if you were looking for ways to do that. I'm looking for a small brush. I think I'm going to do a small filbert for reasons that are hard to explain. I just really like filberts. Yes, we like the words. You know, it, this is number six, and I'd say this is about a quarter of an inch wide brush. This filbert, this particular filbert, has a very, very sharp edge, so it allows me to have very clean, clean lines. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, you know what? No. Here's the big trick. I need my boat to be level. <laughs> it's true. You do. Otherwise, everything looks weird. Everything will look weird if my boat's not level. So I'm going to try to get my boat level first. Yes. So in this particular instance, just to give myself a little guide here, I'm going to give myself a little chalk line. Even if I go below it, it will just help guide my hand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just a visual guide can help you a lot. So if you have a way of making a very nice little level guide, you could put up tape, you could do a lot of things, you know. And I'm going to put the bottom of my boat here. And then I'm going to curve up some edges here. Curving up. This is very similar to the girl in the umbrella with the moon mm -hmm. as a painting process. This could be her boyfriend. That she's sailing away from. I don't know what's going <laughs> on with the girl in the moon. <laughs> right? You know. And then I just kind of look at my my silhouette to determine how I want to paint it in. 
I like painting silhouettes. Sometimes when you're new to painting and you're not really, you don't really have your drawing skills together, silhouettes can be lovely because you're just following the outside edges. Yeah. All right. So I've made a little sort of upward arc here. So you kind of went up to a little point from the edges. Mm-hmm. All right. And then I'm going to say that there's these little, I don't know what these exactly are, but they're upward little things. The oars are like a real thing to get in. I won't even lie to you. The oar holders? The oars. Yeah. The oars are just a whole thing to get in. And I'm going to paint a little. I'm going to give him this here. And then I'm going to give him a little body here. He's kind of like a little brick shape. Hmm. A little brick shape there. I need his head below this horizon line. <laughs> <laughs> Super important. <laughs> Because he'll disappear into the black if yep. it's not. And then I'm just going to give myself a nice little round kind of guy on top. Really, honestly, when I'm sketching it in, this is all I'm doing. Like, that looks good. That looks good. Because your mind completes quite a lot. Your mind will com complete the whole piece. So as long as you have some basic things correct, your mind's going to be like, oh, got it. I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And finish it off for you. Now, I know I wanted my guy to have, like, a little hat. Yep. Because I know he's a hat guy. And his little hat has, like, a little bumple top. Right. And then he's got, maybe, I'm going to give a little bump of an ear here, just to be weird. That works. You know, and I might imply little elbows coming off here. The trick is you may need to give him a couple coats. A black to get you want him solid, yeah, almost like a block print. So, if you need a couple coats, give it a couple coats. And I might give him another little, he seems to have a little, little elbow shape coming here, so I'll apply that as I build those out. It gives him shape. I've got the simpler guy, I guess, coming on traceable. I mm. think I went a little simpler in my first one. <laughs> You know, every time you pull one of these silhouettes out, though, you're going to see more stuff. And there's going to be more stuff that you're going to want to paint in. I'm going to switch out to a slightly bigger brush just to paint in the boat. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I want to paint that in. And one of the things that can, when you're like, man, it takes me a long time to do a painting. What it is, is you don't switch out your brushes when you need to go to a bigger size. Oh, yeah. That's a, something that a new painter will do. They'll get a little brush, and they'll be very comfortable with it, and then they'll do the whole painting with a teeny tiny brush. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, it took like 10 hours. I'm like, yeah, so does take, like scrubbing a deck with the toothbrush also. Very long job. Yeah. Yeah, hey, up she rises. <laughs> that song used to haunt me as a kid, John. What? The what would you do with a, a broken toothbrush? That yay, hey, up she rises. I don't want to get claimed, but you know what I mean? Uh, do you have to sing that? No. Oh, yeah. I think we're just going to skip that. It's your, what are you going to do with the drunken sailor? Like I know. Every kid has to sing that. I'm not going to sing it. Don't worry. But I know. I just like. I just don't know what you're talking about. Really? Gosh, that really bothered me. I was like so concerned for this alcoholic sailor as a kid, like who's being so abused on this ship that he was on. <laughs> <laughs> so and song gave me all this anxiety as a kid. I kind of like that shot. It's like really making me sort of super, uber happy. That d on, on this boat, is directionality of the brushstroke important? On the guy? No. Uh, solidity is important. A nice, solid black coating is what you really, really, really want. So wherever you're putting your silhouette, right, mm -hmm. it's what you really, really, really want. Yeah. You know, and you just want to make sure that you've got nice lines and it feels like he's got a place to sit. I don't know why he's on such a tiny little boat, but he is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long boat. It's a long boat. It's a, well, I mean, that's what the picture is, so I'm just doing that. <laughs> so I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay. Okay. Real quick. So, yeah. So, sorry, I don't have a whole lot more to talk about. I'm just, like, feeling... Other than I can say thank you. I all, And I appreciate that. I always like to say thank you to you guys for showing up. So. Woohoo! 
I was just saying here going, well, gosh, I have nothing to say. What can I say? I should thank everyone for showing up because that's what I, sh you know, that's always a good thing to do. I'm going to make another, I'm going to come to the bottom of my boat and make a level line with my tape. You make a level line. Mm-hmm. This kind of stuff, like, even if you're not a drawer, this kind of stuff helps, really, really helps you. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to take another little piece of tape because I want my oars to be in the water. Oh, yeah. Right? And I'm going to take this oar to the water. And then I'm going to come on the other side. And I'm going to say, he has another oar. And I'm going to take it to the water. I want the oars to be triangular. To make a... Right? That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get that nice bright that I did my horizon line on. This little sharp guy. And I'm going to just as carefully as I can, and it's a little challenge for me, so if it's a little challenge for you, don't feel bad. As carefully as I can, I'm going to draw a skinny little line down here. Your oar line? My oar line. Look, I would not freehand this triangle correctly, so I use the tape. I love all the comments that come in after I'm left alone to talk to them because they come with all these great ideas for me to do. Like, we should get a book for you to read. <laughs> 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 well, I have Victoria Finley's book on color. It's very interesting. <laughs> break out something like Moby Dick and just start reading. Yeah, and then we're just reading it page by page. And you got to watch all the episodes <laughs> to hear the whole story. Let's take on something like Harry Potter and really be at it for a while. <laughs> yeah. So you can see how that gives me a little line that's easier for me to work with. See? Mm -hmm. Now I have a line I can deal with. Because earlier I'd be like, I don't know. And because of that, they're going in the water where I need them to go. <laughs> so I'm going to pull out my um, my sharp filbert. Yep. I'm going to load it up with a little more black. And I'm going to just make a little oar that comes out and goes into the water. A little splashy splashy. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got to have something he's getting somewhere with. It's, you know, it's got to be a functioning oar. You know, if you need to improve your line here, you can. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to make a little oar that's going splashy splashy into the water. It's a little thicker so you know that it's an oar. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't know it's an oar. You'd be like, what is that? Thicking it up lets you know it's an oar. And here is the fun part for me. I'm going to get back into my square. Yep. All right. And we're going to make this reflection. By the way, we're almost done with this painting, John. Wow. I know. It's so easy. Right? And so a reflection is like sort of the mirror of what's happening here. Right? But it's also just this little shadow that we want to we want to tell people about, but we don't want to be... Too crazy. So I'm going to be like, one thing I'm going to talk about is that I've got a guy. Look at that. Yeah. He is, I'm horizontal. Is the, is the up close really on this? Because I think it's important to know that my brush stroke is as level as I can make it. All right. And then I'm going to take a little bit here, kind of tell the story about this side of the boat, tell them some stories about the boat. <laughs> so it appears that they're joking about how in different parts of the world, the size of your boat is important. Well, you know, in Australia, you wouldn't want to be in a small boat coming across a large crocodile, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Now, I need to make an implied diagonal line here. If you need to give yourself some tape as a guide, definitely do that. But what you're doing is you're making a little reflection that says that there is a reflection. Isn't that awesome? It is. It's so awesome. And it implies that there is just this little bunch of stuff happening here and there you go now all I got to do is take off my tape and reveal my horizon line Ta -da! which is sharp 
That's so cool. Reflection. So art is just easy. Yeah. It's something that you can do. It's something that you can have in your life. This, for sure, is going to lower your blood pressure and help you take a quiet minute. If you've got to get your chalk off once this is dry, you can just wipe this off with a slightly damp rag once it's dry. Once it's dry. And a very light touch, because if you're doing student paints, you can actually get the student paint up. <laughs> so that's, that's not helpful. Yeah. But I hope you like this. I don't know. I mean, and think you could do this in yellows and oranges. You could do this in black, grays, and reds. I mean, there's literally, you could do this in this part in black and white, kind of a grayscale, and then do all this reflection in red. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Play with the design of this, because once you get the painting process of it down. Yeah. You are I completely in like Flynn. Um, check the live, be sure, and uh, if you want to be for one of the events, because we're going to be here all, like, a big long time on John's birthday, which is New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. Doing yeah, a fire-breathing dragon, um, and then we're glittering it, and then we're going to have a little party. And then there's, I have to go to an art retreat immediately after, and then when I come back, I'm going to show you what I made on the art retreat. Yeah, and I hear that Craft Shack is also doing a live broadcast on New Year's Eve, so after we're CC done, CC yeah. Creations with Craft Shack is doing a live broadcast. Kim Sim has that link, Yeah, which I hope she's posted, and hopefully they'll be back in post. Um, and they're doing like a big New Year's crafting awesome something, and so... So definitely go check out their stuff. Who wants to go out and drink? I'd just hang out with Craft Shack, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 If we're up, like if we have not fallen asleep, I'll be there. Yep. <laughs> Because I'm such a funny that I make it to midnight. <laughs> you know. But we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. And, um, but you should make it. I want to so see you awesome. guys. Really, what? I see. It's so awesome. I love how the painting looks like it's got a reflection of space in the in the lake. You know, yeah. it's like the nebula. It's just so beautiful. I love that. It's one it's of my just, favorite paintings. Huh? I love it. I think really? It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, honey, it's yours. <laughs> Because he keeps well, all the paintings. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I will caretake this painting you will until, I, this painting. but it, it will go in in rotation with the rest of them. So love to know what you think. Love it, you know. Oh, there's a dream catcher coming up. If you scroll through the, oh yeah, and and stuff is happening. Everyone the is Bob congratulating is you for your million views. Huh? Everyone's congratulating on oh, your yeah, million, we have a million views. Yeah. It was super exciting for me. Yeah. It's just like. <gasps> uh, so. Uh, so Mona was asking. There's no reflection of the of the moon. No, That's I know. <laughs> <laughs> you could put it there. When I did it in design, I didn't like it as much. Huh? Because sometimes it's about negative space, and artists get really oh, afraid yeah. of working with negative space and leaving it. And it was an interesting thing to just. I, it actually is not like a mistake I made. It was like I looked at it with the reflection and went, eh. Yeah, and there's also no reflection of the of the uh, mountain range. No. Yeah, that's really cool. I know. It was just, you could do it, but then it stopped being this. There was this interesting spatial relationships here, and when I put this here, then it wasn't really in a third. Like, this is sort of in a third. It wasn't in a focal place that I needed it, and then this here, it was like, I wasn't sure I liked that space. So this is what you've got to do as an artist, and we'll be doing this on the pairs is what we talk about, like, how you make decisions like do you honor what's realistic or do you honor the space on the canvas hmm. hmm and so on this one i decided to honor the empty spaces on the canvas interesting very that's, nagal of me yes i'm not saying i'm as good as nagal i'm just saying that's sort of the thinking in that in my art dna so good good point asking that question yeah, I and think you can be like, no, I feel like it needs to be there, and I'll be like, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, that's what we have to do as artists, right? Yeah, that's what we have to do as artists. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Does it does it resonate? Does it add to the piece? Does it create weight? What does it do? That's pretty cool. So, if you guys want to do a flip mirror of this and then see what you like of that, and then do the moon here, huh. do that and see how you like that. If you're like, no, I like it clean and empty and kind of modernist. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not like I can take the brushes out of your hands and be like, no. I like that modernist approach. I hadn't even thought about that, you yeah. know, the construction of it there. That's really cool. It creates the, it's, it's actually elements to the surrealism of the piece. Yeah. 
I still have to be defending this at Critique, though, which <laughs> where they'd be like, what's going on? And I have to be like, this is what I was doing. But I think it's awesome. Thanks. And thanks, oh. everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much for coming today. Breathe in the good. Breathe out the bad. Value yourselves. You have value. You have worth. Your time, your creativity, all the parts of you have meaning and worth. Mm-hmm. Definitely, let's see. I want to see you guys fire breathing dragons, even if that's not your thing, because I think it's going to be a fun day. And we love you very much, and we want to see you at the easel really soon. Love you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>